This is the story of a ragtag bunch of church members who set out to perform a Christmas play, and the director who tried his hardest to just keep it all together. The Glory of Christmas. Hi, my name's Joel. I'm the director of our church play, The Glory of Christmas. This is my 12th year. We're okay, just the stained glass window. It's going great. Uh, the only thing that we lacked was uh, someone to play the role of Mary up until yesterday. But then I found her and she, she's perfect. I got the role of Mary because I'm 31 weeks pregnant. Yep, two kids in college and then Surprise! We're just so, we're so full of joy. I, I can't act, Joel. There's no way I can sell this. No, 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 not true. Your audition was fantastic. How can it be me? How can I be highly flavored by God? Did I just say flavored? Why can't I stop talking about food? Ah, uh, she's perfect. Oh, hey, you're, you're Joseph. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm Heather. I play Mary, your wife. Oh! Mm-hmm. I remember you. Oh? You played Bunko with my mom. Mm. You know, what is Bunko? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Mm -mm. You must mentally sink into her situation. Yes, yes. Go spend the night in a barn somewhere. The hay will trigger something deep within you. Sorry. Yeah, it'll trigger something. Trigger something that don't need a hand in histamine. Mm. This is good. Ooh. Ooh. I'm the least likely person to play Mary, let alone deliver the Son of God. I'm a middle-aged former soccer mom. And the truth is that this baby disrupted some pretty amazing plans we had for our lives. Things we've been looking forward to for years. Okay, Mary and Joseph, let's take it back to scene 11. Scene 11, please. Maybe that's how Mary felt. Maybe people stared, unsure of what to tell her. Maybe she doubted. Maybe she doubted, even though God told her not to fear. And then she trusted. She trusted, she trusted that what God was doing would bring the greatest kind of joy if she would just let go, let go of her plans, her questions, and... There we go. Just let the good shepherd carry you. <laughs> let the good shepherd carry me. <laughs> She would just let go of her plans and let the good shepherd carry her. To know the incredible truth that Jesus, the good shepherd, not only can carry you, but he actually wants to carry you. It's one of the glorious parts of the greatest story ever told. The glory of Christmas. That's what we're exploring this Advent season. There are so many glorious facets to explore, but especially this good news as we begin this conversation is that, that Jesus is able to carry the weight that is pressing down on the shoulders of all his sheep during this season, including you, and whatever weight you're carrying today. Weight. It's an interesting and appropriate word when talking about the glory of Christmas. 
In Hebrew, the, the word for glory in the Old Testament is kavod. And kavod, while it's translated glory appropriately sometimes, more often than not, it means weight. And especially referring to the, the weight of our, our sin. You see the connection then, don't you? To think about the glory of Jesus being most clearly seen in his willingness to bear the weight of our sin. And the weight that comes with this season we're in too. Advent has an aspect of weightiness in the midst of the preparation to not just look forward to Jesus' return, but to think back and to celebrate Christmas. And Christmas, I mean, honestly, there's a lot of superficial things that easily distract us. And after all we've been through in 2020, we actually kind of look forward to the distraction. But if we're not careful, an unnecessary and undesirable weight around unhealthy unhealthy Christmas expectations can begin to slump our shoulders and suffocate our soul. Especially this year, when so many plans and preparations have had to change and continue to change, and it creates even more and more pressure to make this Christmas great with the desire that so many of us, I think, have to make at least one thing go right this year. We can find ourselves feeling pressured to get everything done from decorating to shopping to baking to to figuring out how and what format we're going to see everybody or Zoom with everybody in a way that leaves family and friends feeling satisfied or not with the amount of FaceTime everybody is going to be able to, quote, enjoy. Yeah. And there's feelings, too. There's so much to do, not enough time, not enough money to get it all done, to make Christmas, right? And we feel the weight of it, the weight of Christmas. And we may be in danger of missing the true glory of it because of that weight. So let me remind you right now that standing there beside you, no matter where you're at and what you're going through, the good shepherd is there. He is ready, willing, and able to carry you through this season of Advent to Christmas to experience much needed and meaningful hope, peace, joy, and love. And it may be that changing your plans is a part of his plan for your life. (laughs) That 31-week pregnant Mary in the video certainly had her plans for life altered when she and her husband found out that they were pregnant. Two in college and one in the womb was not how this Mary had mapped out her life. Perhaps she was expecting to fill her empty nest with travel time, reallocating freed up money from braces to remodeling the house now that the kids were gone with straight teeth. (laughs) Whatever our Mary's plans may have been, coupling college tuition with diapers and baby formula was not in her plans. Perhaps the weight of considering how her previous plans were having to pivot caused her knees to buckle a bit. And yet God reminds us in the Bible that he knows a thing or two about the plans for our lives. And God wants to remind you this Advent that the heaviness of your circumstances can be carried along by the truth of his word and his promises within it to you. Consider some of these promises throughout the scriptures. Let's start in the Old Testament in the book of Proverbs. These are some great ones. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Proverbs 3. Later on, the heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Proverbs 16, 9. Another one, many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Proverbs 19, 21. In the New Testament, there's plenty of conversation about this too. The Apostle Paul, I love what he writes. This is one that we go to over and over again. If if you've heard my messages before, you know I love this passage, but it's comforting and promising that we hear in Romans. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. I love that because it's not that all things are good, but all things can work together for good. That's God's promise for you. Good and bad can work together to accomplish something better and bigger in God's perspective. He also writes this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He says, as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. You can't even fathom what he's prepared for you. 
And then there's perhaps one of the most famous passages about, about plans and, and, and the future that, that so many like to be reminded of, that so many of us have in our houses, on our, on our walls, painted and, and reminded there in front of us from Jeremiah 29 that declares, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. I love that because when he shares those words, Jeremiah, he knows that those plans, they're not all sunshine and roses and prosperity and wealth, far from it. Those plans are actually going to involve what would turn out to be 70 years of captivity in Babylon for many of God's people. And the plans can appear confusing at times. The plans are hard to understand. Plans at times are even unpleasant and undesirable. But the truth remains. God has a plan. Yes, God has a a pattern of sharing his intentions for planning things in our lives, which may be different than we sometimes have it planned in our minds. It's not that it's wrong for us to plan. No, planning is, is good and it is right. But may we not get crushed by the disappointing weight of our plans changing from what we had in our minds to what the reality really is confident no matter what. This is the truth, that the Good Shepherd desires to carry you through the changing plans in the different seasons of your life. So let me ask you, will you let him? Will you choose to trust? Will you choose to take a breath? Will you choose to notice the glory of Christmas by looking at Jesus and his birth story with fresh eyes? and a lighter heart this season. See, God wants to show you his glory of Christmas. And sometimes he goes to supernatural lengths to unveil the plans he he has in mind. He did that for a young teenage girl some 2,000 years ago named Mary. Remember what was said to her in Luke's gospel that would lead to the glory of Christmas and the plans God had in mind for this young girl? Luke 1, 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her, the angel did, and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. What's next? And the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. And then Mary asks an important question to the angel. And she says, how will this be? Since I am a virgin. And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her her old age has conceived a son. This is the sixth month with her who is called barren. For nothing, nothing will be impossible for God. And then Mary says this, this is incredible, beautiful statement of faith. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. An incredible, incredible scene from a story that maybe we've heard so many times that we've forgotten just how glorious and amazing it is. I mean, for, for Mary, everything changed that day. That day, the angel of the Lord encountered her with a new set of plans leading to the glory of that first Christmas, a glory that would be beheld in a Bethlehem stable. She could tarry, she could worry, or she could choose to trust and to wait on the Lord over the next nine months to fulfill his plans and to carry her into motherhood. And Mary chose to trust and to wait. She chose to let God carry her through the upcoming days of uncertainty, of hardships, on not just herself, but her her husband-to-be, 
would need some time to process himself this new change of plans. And as the weight of all these circumstances and challenges mounted, God's glory came into the world right on time, just as he had planned. The Apostle Paul says it this way in one of his letters, but when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. From Galatians chapter 4. Such a promise and a plan from God is weighty and glorious beyond all scales of measurement that God chose to invoke the plan of salvation by a divine conception into the womb of a young Jewish girl who had yet to even experience motherhood. She would be entrusted to grow God's glory in human form inside her body and give birth to the full divinity clothed in humanity. Only God could come up with such a plan. That would lead to all who call on the name of Mary's baby Jesus to be saved from their sins. Not only that, but the true glory and weight of it all was that such a plan would lead to those calling on the name of Jesus to also be adopted as sons and daughters into the very household of God himself. What kind of God could come up with family planning like that? The kind of God who would select a virgin to be the mom of his only begotten son. And a God who could choose to change the plans of a former soccer mom with two in college to be 31 weeks pregnant with her third child. The kind of God who could be working even at this season of your life for you too. Not just can, but he is. Our God knows the plans he has for all of us. As crazy as those plans may seem as times, they are plans for our welfare. They are plans to give us hope and a future. And that future includes a capacity to experience and enjoy the glory of Christmas even this year, especially this year, that can give us courage for living today. Plans have changed this year for all of us, some way or another, big and little, We can lament. We can lament and and we can think about and stay questioning and, and, and stuck on what we've lost. Or we can learn how to live in this moment. We can learn how to be present in the unfolding plan. Trusting God, you are still in control. The outcome of our story, the outcome of the story, friends, by faith is still unchanged. I love how the Apostle Paul writes in his second letter to the church in Corinth. He writes these encouraging words. Second Corinthians chapter four, he says it this way. This is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are quite small. I know they don't feel that way, but they are quite small. They won't last very long. Yet they produce for us an immeasurably great glory. There's that word again, that will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we look forward to what we have not yet seen. For the troubles we see will soon be over, but the joys to come, friends, oh, the joys to come, oh, the joys to come, they will last forever. So may the glory of Christmas and God choosing to dwell with us give us hope as we look forward by faith to the joys that will last forever. As we join with Mary in this season and trust that God has it all figured out. And so we humbly come next to her and say, we too are servants of the Lord. Let it be to us according to your word. Amen.